When we use this phrase, it's usually with a wry smile. We say, now what's this I hear about you and a certain young lady you know, going out last night? You know, we say, a little bird told me that you were out with so-and-so, a little bird. In our modern usage, it's usually a bit of playful fun uh, as we conceal our sources by saying, a little bird told me. Um, but when it's used in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, this phrase sounds very ominous. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 20, do not revile the king even in your thoughts or curse the rich in your bedroom because a bird in the sky may carry your words and a bird on the wing may report what you say. This is the origin of the phrase, a little bird told me. And really it sounds more like a North Korean directive from the thought police. It's, it's scary stuff. Yet as with all of Ecclesiastes, it's not meant to be wrenched from its context and, and, and pressed into service as a moral or religious pep talk. The teacher is opening up his spiritual journal and it's being written from a very particular viewpoint. It's all about life under the sun. This is the perspective of someone who won't, exp uh, won't um, kind of believe in or accept an inbreaking God or a life beyond death. It's just restricted to life in the here and now. And from that perspective, Solomon says some very unspiritual things. Uh, take, for example, the very verse uh, before uh, verse 20, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. It says, a feast is made for laughter, wine makes life merry, and money is the answer for everything. I mean, there's a verse for a Christian bumper sticker, isn't it? It's not great advice, is it? But it's precisely how we will live if life under the sun is all there is. And our verse for today, all about birds as spies, um, this falls into that same category. This saying will not yield us any pithy moral content. But it is interesting to see the categories of thought which the teacher takes for granted. Let's think about these categories of thought as, as the teacher is thinking about things. Firstly, the saying betrays a deeply ingrained hierarchy. Honor for the king is approved of, unlike the contempt that we often hold our leaders in today. Uh, but secondly, the, the worst crime imaginable is to curse the king. You know, when Solomon himself ascended the throne, the people shouted, God save the king. Ultimately, our hope is in the Messiah, the son of David, the true king, to represent his people when he comes and, and for him to fight our battles and win our victories. And, and we, we are meant to honor him and therefore to spurn him is really to spurn all hope. So that's an interesting category that, that the, 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 the teacher is pointing towards. And then finally, the teacher thinks of birds as messengers. There's an important biblical connection here, as, as the spirit is represented by a dove. He who communicates our thoughts to God and his thoughts to us is the Holy Spirit. I mean, 1 Corinthians 2 uh, from verse 10 says, God has revealed these things to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. Um, and, and then it goes on to say, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So, let's put those three truths together. We're, we're meant to honor the king and not curse the king, and, and the, the Spirit communicates our thoughts. Now, you could put those truths together in a scary way. You could say this, I do not hold the king, Jesus, in the highest possible regard. Therefore, the Spirit will inform on me to God. That's a scary thought, isn't it? It would be totally fair, but scary. We should expect the Spirit to communicate my rebellion against Christ to God. But here's a wonderful gospel truth. Through the sheer grace of God, that dynamic is reversed. I have rebelled against Christ, and yet the Spirit of the Son, instead of informing on me, He intercedes for me. Romans 8 verse 27 says the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So he flies up to heaven bearing a report to God that is far better than we deserve. What's more, he turns around and brings back to us news far greater than we can imagine. Romans 8 verse 16 says the Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. In common parlance, a little bird carries all sorts of trivial news, but in the Bible, the almighty dove, the Holy Spirit, has an incredible truth to declare. In spite of all that you deserve, you are blessed and beloved in King Jesus. 
So whoever has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. Mm -hmm.